lesson. My name is Michelle and this lesson is one of the very first lessons in our series of how to write complex sentences. Yes, this is going to be of a great help to you because complex sentences help you be much more fluent. Right, so I have a question for you. What is this? This is a hand. What is a hand? Hand is a noun. Of course it is. But it can also be a subject. Yes, when it's part of a sentence. And that's what we are going to find out today. What are the main parts of a sentence, just like the hand is a main part of our body? So please join me. I'm so glad to have you with me. Right, so here we are and let's look at the first sentence that we have in red. Kate is a thin girl, right? So what question can you form for this sentence? You could say, who is a thin girl? The answer would be, Kate is a thin girl. So what is Kate here? Kate is the subject, yes, because it's answering the question, who? So Kate is the subject. So whenever a name or a word answers the question who, it is always the subject. Now let's talk about the form of the word Kate. Kate is a name and that's why it's a noun. So you can see that subject is always a noun. Yes, you must remember that, that a subject is always a noun. So Kate is a thin girl. Here Kate is the simple subject because there is no more information along with Kate except that she's a thin girl. So if we look at Kate, that is a simple subject because it's just a noun. Right, now let's look at the next sentence that we have. Jack's poem about his mother made the class cry. What kind of a question can you make out of this? You could say, whose poem made the class cry? What would be the answer? The answer would be, Jack's poem about his mother made the class cry. Now this is also a subject, but as you can see that here we only have the name Kate and here we have the entire information about the poem. That's why it's not a simple subject, but this is a full subject because we are giving all the information about the poem. Whose poem is it? It's Jack's poem. About whom? About his mother. So this is a full subject. I'll write it here for you. A full subject. Now let's look at the difference between simple subject and full subject. So simple subject will always have just a noun, a single noun or a name, right? But a full subject will have a noun phrase. It not only has a noun, but, is, but it has added information along with the noun. So this is a noun phrase. Interesting, isn't it? Let's look at the next sentence that we have. Paul and Tommy joined the team. So you could ask, who all joined the team? Again, it's answering the question who, therefore we know that we are looking for the subject. Already you know that a subject has to be a noun or a noun phrase, so look for the noun in this one. How many nouns have you got? You've got two nouns, Paul and Tommy. And what have we done with them? We have joined the two nouns, right, with and. So whenever we join two nouns with each other with an and, it's called a compound subject, which means to join two things together. So this is a compound subject for you. Just to help you remember, this is a simple subject where we have just a noun, all right? This is a full subject where we have a noun phrase. And here we have the compound subject where we have more than one noun, which means two nouns which are joined together using an and. Great. So this is where we have looked at a subject, right? Which is a very important part of a sentence. Now here is the sentence for you. Why don't you find out the subject for this sentence for yourself? 
So the first step would be to ask the who question. Kelly walked down the street. Who walked down the street? Kelly walked down the street. So definitely, Kelly is the subject. Great. With that, we look at the next important part of a sentence. So we've already looked at the noun. Now let's look at the first one here. Harry ate. Which one is the noun? Harry, right? So the noun is the subject, isn't it? So let's write subject over here. So we already have the noun, we already have the subject. What are we left with? What is ate? Do you know the word ate, which is the past form for the word eat, right? What is eating? It's an action, right? So it's a verb. So ate is a verb. Now, what is verb in a sentence? What do we call that part of a sentence which tells us what the noun is doing? So this question is actually answering what is Harry, what did Harry do, right? Harry ate or what is Harry doing? Harry is eating. In that way, ate is the verb which is called the predicate. So predicate essentially answers what the subject is doing. So subject is the actor and predicate answers what is the actor doing. Right. Now, as you've already seen, that Harry and Eight, when we join them together, they form a complete sentence. So you must remember that a subject and a predicate together by themselves can have a full sentence. You do not need more information with it. You could say, Harry ate the apples. So that would be a full sentence. But if you say Harry ate, that's still a full sentence and you do not need more information with it. So a verb and a predicate can form, sorry, a subject and a predicate can form a full sentence by itself. Right, so this one, like here we have the simple subject, which is Kate. Here we have the simple predicate, which is eight. The simple predicate. Why is it a simple predicate? Because we do not have any added information about how he ate, right? We just know that he ate. We don't know if he ate slowly or if he ate quickly, right? Now let's look at the next sentence that we have. The mouse slowly ran towards the cheese. How did the mouse run? Did you notice something special here? So let's see first the subject. Mouse is the subject, okay, because it's the noun. Now the predicate, as you already know, is the verb, all right? Now the interesting part is we have more information with the verb. How did the mouse run? The mouse ran slowly. So this is an adverb. And it tells us more about the verb. So this one here is a full predicate. As this is a simple predicate, this is a full predicate. Just to remind you that a full subject is always a noun phrase and a full predicate is always an adverb along with a verb. And it quest answers the question about the subject. What is the subject doing? So the mouse, what is the mouse doing? The mouse is running slowly towards the cheese. Great, now let's look at the next sentence that we have with us and this is, she both laughed, haha, -ha, and cried at the film. So when she saw the film, she had mixed emotions, right? We have two verbs here, laughed and cried. As you may have already guessed, she is the subject because she is the actor in the sentence. She both laughed and cried. So two verbs coming together with an and form a compound predicate, just like a compound subject. Sorry.
Okay. So, a compound subject has two nouns joined with an and, but a compound predicate has two verbs joined with an and. I hope this has been really helpful for you to find out the main parts of a sentence, the first one being a subject and the second one being a predicate. Now, try yourself in the first phrase or uh, first sentence that we have, she walked down the street. What did she do? We are answering the question, what, which means we are talking about the action. So what did she do? She walked down the street. So this is the predicate. Now let's look at the rest of the sentences that we have with us. They like ice cream on hot days. Do you like ice cream on hot days? Well, I love it. So they like ice cream on hot days is a complete sentence, as you can see, right? But if I only say they like ice cream, wouldn't that be enough, right? But I'm giving more information by saying on hot days. So whenever I'm giving more information, this means that I'm adding a clause. On hot days is a clause. So a clause is used to add more information to a sentence. So they like ice cream on hot days. Okay, if I say they like ice cream, it's a full sentence, isn't it? But if I say on hot days, is it a full sentence? If I say only hot days, on hot days, it's not. So whenever a clause cannot stand on its own, it's called a dependent clause. Because it's dependent on the main part of the sentence, which is they like ice cream. Now let's look at the next one that we have. John washed the dishes. Okay, fine, John washed the dishes. So it's a complete sentence, but we add more to it, more information. But he didn't want to, which means that we are adding more information. Now let's look at the sentence, he didn't want to. Is it a complete sentence? Yes, it is. So that's why this is an independent clause because it is not dependent on the first part of the sentence. So this is an independent clause for you. And how do we join them? We have tried to join them by using the word but. However, just to rem help you remember, John washed the dishes can stand by itself, but he didn't want to. This can also stand by itself. Therefore, the second part of the sentence is an independent clause and it's not dependent on the first part. Coming back to the first one we have, Kelly walked down the street. I have a quick test for you. Kelly walked down the street in the evening. So in the evening, quickly tell me, is it a dependent clause or an independent clause? This one here is, an, is a dependent clause. And why is that so? Because in the evening, just like on hot days, cannot stand alone. So with this, we complete the sentence and we also complete this lesson. I hope this lesson was really helpful for you to understand the main parts of a sentence. In the next lesson in this series of complex sentence writing, I'm going to explain to you the dependent clauses and the independent clauses in more detail. Do not forget to do the test at the end of this video or you can find the link in the description box. Thank you so much for having me. I had a great time teaching you. Thank you. Bye-bye.